If you're a new player in Game of Thrones, winter is coming, then you probably want to power up quickly so that you can smash your enemies and keep your city safe. So in this video, I'm going to give you the tips and tricks you need in order to power up super fast. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskool Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Game of Thrones Winter is Coming. That's Yuzu Games. If you'd like to download the game using my link, that will support the channel, and that link is in the description. Check it out. In this video, we're going to do the following things. First of all, I'm going to talk about why it is that power gain is actually an important goal at the very start of a new server. From there, I'm going to talk about the things you can do to actually gain lots of power. And lastly, I'll talk about when you should actually try to time this because uh, you actually can align with critical events that will give you huge advantages. So let's start with the first thing in the list. Why is it that you want to gain a bunch of power? And this account is relatively young. The server is like a month old at this point, and I've got 58 million power. I actually have a lot of speed ups still in my bag because I'm waiting for some specific events. I mentioned I'd talk about that later on. Uh, but why is it that you want to gain lots of power? First of all, you'd like to join an alliance that is powerful within your realm. And the thing is that it will be difficult to join one of those alliances if your power is too low. Right now, our alliance is the number one by power in our realm. Some of the weirdness there is that you can invite people from other realms into your alliance. And so uh, everybody's going to have sort of inflated power at the start. When, when you're evaluating which alliance you're going to join, by the way, you can just do a quick search to see, hey, wait a minute, if we look at their members... Like, do they have members that are super high power from another realm, making them look higher power than they actually are? Um, but th setting that aside, um, you want to get into a great alliance so that you can get a bunch of alliance gifts. Those give you a bunch of rewards. Also, you want to be ideally in the alliance that holds some of the most important sites in the kingdom. If you go to the event section of your screen, you'll see that there is a castle siege. The castle siege... Uh, is where you take these buildings that give huge buffs. We hold, we hold literally every single one of these. So we're getting many percentage points of stats for free by virtue of owning these. So you want to be in a top tier active alliance, and there's only so many of those per kingdom. The other reason that you want to gain power is that in the upper left, you have something called an honor token and nobility ranking. Your nobility ranking is based initially on your power. So at the start of the game, by increasing your nobility ranking, you get free speed up time, which you can see on screen. You get building speed. I have 20%. Research speed, 50%. Army size and a daily payment of blue diamonds. Very, very nice. Now, later on, you'll have to actually battle other players to get merit in order to get further progression. However, in the early game, gaining lots of power um, will give you the additional benefit of increasing your nobility level and unlocking other buffs. The other thing you want to do as you gain power quickly in the early game is to do research to get your T3 troops. These T3 troops are available in the military section. If I scroll to the right, that is the elite Infantry, spearmen, bowmen, and cavalry. Now, I have those all unlocked, but even just getting T2 as quickly as you can will be a really nice upgrade. That is the veteran tier of infantry, spearmen, bowmen, and cavalry. And I will say that the bowmen are the least important of these. So if you were to pick a couple, I would say it's the infantry, then your cavalry and spearmen that are probably the most important to focus on initially. So now that we've covered why it is that you want to power up quickly, let's talk about what you need to do it and the best ways to do it. And the first thing we have to talk about is percentage-based boosts to your building speed, your research speed, and your training speed. And I actually have three sets of equipment. So why don't we start with your equipment as an area where you can get really great gains reducing the amount of speed ups and potentially resources you need to make some of these upgrades. Now, I have three sets of equipment just for building up my city's strength. One you can see I have equipped here is reducing the research speed time. So I have uh, research speed boosts on pretty much every single piece of armor that I have. Now, one 
sort of pro tip here if you're looking to progress really quickly in the early game. This Eye of Ryler is really good. Uh, it is very, very easy to obtain. And if you're wondering, like, how do I get all this equipment? Like, I'm a brand new player. This is going to happen in your blacksmith. And you can go to the forge section. And there are several pieces that you'll notice have some of these bonus uh, stats in the champion set, which is really, really easy to work on. Um, you can get this research speed over here on the eye, as I was talking about. There's also a building speed boost in the heart of the ocean. And these are resources, or materials rather, that you'll get from gathering at resource nodes. So this is really easy to grind, and if you're super active in the beginning of the game, you'll be able to get a bunch of that very, very quickly. The maester set is also something worth spending on or um, potentially doing some grinding for. And the way that you do this is you battle Old Town students. Now it says the source on the screen here. So if you're like, I don't know how to get this thing if you're a new player, it tells you Old Town student. And if you wanted to actually find that on the map, you'd go to the world map and you would do a search. And I'll be able to show that to you as soon as it loads in. Search rebel leaders. Now the Old Town students are not actually available for another three days. So when they are available, that's something that you could uh, try to spend a bunch of your uh, energy to go and uh, do. In fact, it's not called energy, it's called motivation. So here's that motivation over here. You send commanders at it or heroes at it uh, and you get loot. Now it takes a lot of loot to actually level up these items a lot. However, working on your research speed very early will enable you to do a lot of powering up. Now also if you spend in the game, you can gain access to this Ring of the New Lord, which gives you a uh, resource cost reduction for your research, which is you know, pretty insignificant for any one research that you do, but given that you do lots of research in the early game, this is actually a pretty sizable boost. So you can do this for your uh, research speed, you can do this for your training speed, you can do this for your building speed. And I swap between these sets every time I'm gonna do new constructions, new research, or train troops. Now training troops is the next thing we really should hone in on, because if I want to gain a lot of power quickly, as it turns out, training troops is probably the number one way that I can gain a ridiculous amount of power very quickly. And tier three are actually the way to go for me uh, because I have them unlocked. But I will say one mistake I made at the start of the game is not just using a bunch of speed ups to train some tier ones. And why is that? Tier ones you'll, you'll sort of use later on as a throwaway frontline troop where they're so cheap you don't care if they die. So initially I thought, man, I don't wanna have a ton of T1s cluttering up my city. However, training troops is actually a great idea because you'll throw away those T1s later anyways, especially in the early game, you're gonna battle White Walkers less than a month into the sort of age of your server. So you'll be blasting through a bunch of these T1s if you're in an active alliance against White Walkers and other things anyways. So. Training even T1s is not a bad idea, especially if you want to do some T1 bowmen. That seems to be very popular for gathering at the start of the game. Um, so training troops is a great way to gain power. There are a couple things you need to be careful of, though. One thing you need to be very careful of if you train a lot of troops is that you also need to work on your hospital capacity. This is visible within your hospital. My wounded information, I can hold 346,000 troops in my hospital. Now, it, if I'm online and I get hit, I probably will not have my hospital overflow with 867,000 troops. There's a lot a lot of ways that I can avoid my hospital overflowing. But if I'm offline, I'm going to get wrecked. So I use a peace shield all the time because if I were to get hit overnight, my troop count exceeds my hospital capacity. Um, but the thing you want to be careful of is having so many troops that if you were to get attacked you would have a bunch of your your troops die because your hospital overflows. Now, if it's T1s, it's maybe not such a big deal because T1s are pretty replaceable, although there's a resource cost associated with that. Um, but just be mindful if you are going to move in on training troops as a strategy to gain power, again, for the purpose of getting into a, like a good alliance um, because, man, if your hospital overflows, they are going to die. Now, that said, the other reason that training troops is a great way in the early game to gain power 
is also because you really want to have troops to go gather with. Like, you need to start gathering early uh, for multiple reasons. One is to get the resources, but the other, as I showed you, is in order to be able to get these items right over here. These materials that you'll need to upgrade your eye, um, as well as, honestly, Heart of the Ocean is really great uh, for building speed, in order to be able to have nice percentage-based boosts, on your building and your research and even your training speed. In fact, just to show you, you know, a couple other items over here that I think are really good. The Rebels End Set is really good for getting percentage-based boosts. This is a material that you're ultimately going to get over here from attacking Rebel Groups. Um, that uses your red energy. I can show you what that looks like um, if I go back out of my city. So those are going to be some really great boosts that you can get. Training troops, really solid. Um, here it is right over here, Endurance. That's what this is called. So if we go back into our city, there's a couple of ways that you can also gain power uh, that are important and actually surprising to me how much power I was gaining. Uh, when I started leveling up my dragon, I started gaining like 100,000 power at a time, which in the early game is actually a ton of power. So if you've been diligently doing the things you need to do to gain the food to grow your dragon and also to level it up by feeding it, you definitely want to do that to gain power. Not only is your dragon more effective, not only can you grow it to the next level. For example, I'm level capped right now at 55. I need more of this currency over here, uh, the fiery essence, in order to grow it from elder to an ancient dragon. Uh, but growing your dragon will be a great way to increase your effectiveness in combat and also gain some power. Now from here, there are a few other things you can do to gain power. One of those things that you should not neglect is working on a diversity of commanders. Now in the early game, you may not know like, gosh, who, who do I work on? But let me steer you toward a couple commanders in the early game that are really strong. Some of them I've worked on, others I have not, and I wish I did. And I'll say that Chris and Arya Stark and Rob Stark are great commanders to work on in the early game. I'll add that if you're spending, Melisandre is a total freaking beast. She is amazing in the Weirwood, gives you amazing progression. Sansa Stark, actually a commander that... You should work on because her healing is really, really good. But in some ways, you don't need to invest too much into her to have her still be a great healer. And then from there, there are commanders that are going to give you percentage-based boosts that are really good. So we talked about earlier how you want all those percentage-based boosts. Well, if we look at Varys, I'm getting 25% research speed from him. That's a big deal. Working on him is pretty reasonable even if you're just increasing his quality and not working too much on his level or his promotions. Here you can see Soren also giving me a huge research speed boost, 25%. This is a big deal. Those are great commanders to work on if you have lots of Weirwood energy. And quite frankly, you're going to have to pick and choose where you focus that grind. Now, there's a couple commanders, as I mentioned, that I kind of skipped and I wish I hadn't. One of those is Goral. And this dude is actually a beast of a tank. I don't even have any Spearman tanks. I'm going to have to loop back and work on him because he is a really, really good tank. Now, how does this increase your power? There's a couple ways. First of all, when you get their medals and you increase their quality, you gain a bunch of power. I noticed that because I had a high promotion level on some of my commanders, when I was increasing to the highest quality level, I was getting like 250,000 power. I was like, holy cow. I mean, at the time, that represented a really large power gain. The other thing you can do is, of course, promote them. Um, and promoting them will not only give you more power, but they become much more effective as you increase their promotion level. So these are ways that you can increase your power that also are super relevant to all the other things that you're doing in the game. Now, the last tip I have for you to gain power quickly in the early game in particular is that if you find yourself running out of resources, one very quick hack that you can do is to actually create a new account. Now, you'll want to have some number of farm accounts anyways that are feeding resources into your main account. But what you can do is you can start to set up that farm account 
And at some point, you're going to have lots of resource tokens and open resources that you get from doing your, your main mission. Uh, and also, if I go to the quest section, right, your daily activity and your story quests, you're going to get a ton of resources out of that. And you can transfer all those to your main. Uh, we're talking about... I don't know, a couple hundred million resources, depending on how much you want to ultimately progress your farm. So one hack that you can do to get a lot of resources and resource tokens that ultimately you'll open up and either transfer or, or plunder from your uh, farm is to make that farm account and then to transfer it to your main. The final thing I want to cover in this video is when should you gain power? And this is very important, and I wish someone had sat me down to explain this before I played my very first day of this game, which is that there are a series of events in this game visible in actually a number of places. These events show up in the events section. They show up, uh, well, probably not in the cross server page at the start of the realm, but in the benefits section, there'll be potentially some events. There's events that show up in the upper right of your screen. There'll be a bunch of them. Night King Invasion is here currently. These events are very important, and one of the first new player events that you really want to take advantage of is one that is giving you back resources and speedups based on what you spend in the first four days of a new realm. So you should go completely ham at the start of a new realm, blasting through all of your speedups and resources over the course of the four days because then you get a percentage of them back in the subsequent four days. So whatever you spend on day one, you'll get a percentage of that back on day five. Whatever you spend on day two, you get a percentage of that back on day six, and so on. This is a really big deal. And sure, I just finished saying how you really, in some ways, um, get a huge advantage and should potentially wait for big research and big you know, um, building cues that you do to get things like this extra research speed over here or to level up your equipment to get more bonuses. Um, but the way to think about that first event at the start of the game is that it's offsetting the fact that you won't have all that stuff yet. So going ham at the start is something I wish I had done because the percentage back is actually just amazing. And if you can, once you start to power up, you will get a daily, an elite-based quest and a normal quest. Now, these quests rotate. The daily quest is literally once per day. It rotates, uh, and that happens at reset. That's zero UTC. There is an elite quest, which will focus on different things every hour. Mine right now is giving me rewards for technology research, training soldiers, and then rebels. And then a normal quest, which is much easier to do and rotates every three hours. Once you get this available, and you'll not have this at the start of the game, you'll want to time things so that it lines up perfectly. Like right now, when I want to gain power and do research, I should have the daily quest be researched, the elite quests, I'll try to speed things up when they're active for research, and my normal quest, ideally, also benefits from technology research, right? You want to try to have all these things align so that you get the maximum rewards possible from this event. In addition, mentioning events here that are just really powerful, Night King's Invasion gives you a training speed boost and a research speed boost before the event actually starts. So you'll see a little countdown on your screen for when this event is going to start, and it'll say training speed boost, research speed boost. Those boosts are active until the event actually happens. So there's sort of a countdown to when the White Walkers will arrive. During that time, you have those boosts. You should take advantage of that. I didn't realize that's how that worked. I thought that those boosts would be available to me once the event started. The opposite was true. Kind of tragic that I was sandbagging my research and, and saving my speed ups because I actually already had the buff and I just didn't realize it. GG. Um, one other event that you'll want to use your speed ups and power up during is the Lord of Lords. Now, if possible, this will give you access to a commander if you rank highly enough. And there will be people who will be absolutely waiting to power up during this event, gives you access to Sabrina. She's very difficult to work on and to get her medals, but that can give you a construction speed boost and a research speed boost and a training speed boost on Sabrina. Um, very powerful effects. She's very hard to get. You work on her over a very, very long period of time. But Lord of Lords will have a power up stage. There's also a troops training stage and, and actually there's many stages. So that's a great time to power up a bunch 
and blast through a bunch of speed ups, right? By saving for these events and waiting till those great moments, you can take advantage of them in order to get extra rewards, which is really critical in this game. A few other quick tips as we wrap up the video is that I assume you already know this, but if you are speeding things up, make sure that you have the maximum number of helps before you speed those things up. Uh, your castle is going to dictate the number of times that you can be helped, which is a big deal. You can see here that my help limit is 30 because I'm at castle level 25. That means 30 times people can reduce the time required for research and building. Um, so I don't speed up until this says 30 out of 30. I do make exceptions for that. Sometimes it's difficult to get the 30 helps before you actually... Um, are gonna have this elite event rotate out. So there have been many times where I'm like, well, I haven't been helped the max number of times, but I'm a small number of points away from getting a bunch of bonus research speed, or, you know, or speed ups of some other kind. So in those situations, yeah, like if I'm at 28 helps, fine, I'll speed it up so that I can get the bonus speed ups rather than let, you know, time elapse and then lose out on that opportunity. So one more thing to just sort of keep in mind is make sure you get those helps through and then uh, speed it up even if you don't have them, if it means the difference between getting a tiered reward that could mean more speed ups overall if you just spend a few hours. A few other quick tips, and there's, there are just so many things you can do to sort of power up quickly in this game, is that if you are spending in the game, the honor token is really nutty. You want to have this active and is probably the best place to spend if you're going to have some black diamonds to throw around. Uh, this gives you a research speed boost, a building speed boost. Uh, it, it's really, really strong. It also boosts your drop rates when you're gathering, you're doing expedition, hospital healing speed. I mean, look at all these boosts, man. It's actually just insane. So the honor token is a really solid pickup. In addition, your blue diamonds at the start of the game should probably almost entirely go into VIP. And making your way up to like VIP level eight is really solid, in part because you get a quick claim on all your Alliance gifts, which is really, really nice. Uh, but the other boosts are, are really good too. I mean, you get a nice Lord experience boost, March speed. Um, there's a lot of things that you're gaining in here. This does increase your power. But, but it's not, I mean, it, it is a power increase, but it's not too significant. With all that said, if you have any other tips or tricks or things that a new player ought to know to gain power quickly, definitely leave a comment down below. I know we've covered a lot of topics here regarding how you can gain power fast, including why you should gain power, how you can gain that power, and when you should gain that power. Uh, but if you're ever in doubt for like, what the heck should I be doing right now? Uh, you can always look to your quests and specifically focus on your story quests in order to advance your chapter level. Or you can look to getting your T3 troops unlocked. If you don't have them, what do you need to do to go and get them and then do that? <laughs> because T3 troops are a really nice initial bump in combat effectiveness and it will be a very, very, very long time before you ultimately get to T4s. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, throw a like on here, consider subscribing to the channel, and a big thank you again to Yuzu Games for sponsoring today's video. If you haven't already downloaded the game, consider using my link in the description. That will support the channel, and you could always migrate to my server and potentially play in our alliance uh, if you wanted to join us. The way that you do that is you'll create your new account, you'll go to the world icon, uh, once you're able to view the world map, like you see here, in the upper right, there's the globe icon. You'll go to Kingdom 386, that's the Smash Squad. Uh, I'll click a different kingdom just so I can show this to you. Um, but you'll click into the kingdom, you'll scroll to the left, just outside of this tree line over here. And then you'll tap and you hit relocate and you can bring your brand new account to our server if you'd like to play with us. And hey, we're always looking for super active players in the Smash Squad. Even if you're low power, if you're active, you can join us. So consider joining us in 386. And if you're looking for more information about Game of Thrones, Winter is Coming, I'll have cards in the end screen with beginner tips and my ultimate guide to help get you a fast start.